What up guys, Golzan here for Anime Uproar and I have some explosive facts for you today. As we often do, we had a vote on Instagram at Anime Uproar whether the next video should be about Fumikage or Bakugo and we had about 1000 votes. Thank you to everyone who voted, it was extremely close but Baku Goat came out on top with 51% of the votes. The cool thing about Bakugo is that he's a polarizing character. People usually have strong feelings about him. They love him or hate him. But there's no doubt that many of you are big fans and helped make this video happen. If you like these fact videos, make sure to text to smash that like button to let me know. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and ring that magic YouTube bell for more My Hero Academia videos. Let me know what fact video you want to see next in the comments below and it may just be the next fact video I do. Now without further ado, let's learn something about the most infamous class 1A student, Bakugo. Fact number 1. If you watched the previous fact videos I made, you probably know by now that Horikoshi puts a lot of thought into the names of his characters. They usually in one way or another reflect the quirk, personality and or other traits of the character in question. Bakugos is one of my favorite names because of how well it reflects his character. Bakugo's name contains the kanji used in the word explosion and the kanji used in the verb to win. Obviously the word explosion reflects his quirk and his personality. Whichever way you look at it, he's quick to explode. He even wanted to include explosion in his hero name, King Explosion Murder, which I gotta say is probably the greatest name for a hero I've ever heard. Batman is one thing, but imagine if a guy called King Explosion Murder showed up when you were being attacked by a villain. You would be like, is this guy gonna rescue me or murder us both? <laughs> Anyways, the fact that Baku's name references winning is also perfect. He's not called Baku Goat for nothing. He wants to be the best and as early as episode 1, he says he's going to surpass All Might. This guy's not only talented, but works hard too. He's a winner and he even won in the UA tournament. Sometimes he isn't so victorious, but those moments are exceptions to the rule. And it hits him really hard because he is so obsessed with being a winner, with being number one. This brings us to fact number two. There is no doubt that Deku is the protagonist or main character of My Hero Academia. But Bakugo is arguably the second most important character in the show. Bakugo is the second main character or deuteragonist. And I'm going to use Wikipedia to help define this term because this is not one of my English grad papers where I have to avoid the oh so handy website like a medieval plague. So the deuteragonist, literally translated as second actor, is the second most important character after the protagonist. They may switch between supporting and opposing the protagonist, depending on their own conflict or plot. Bakugo definitely fits the role better than anyone else. He is there from the beginning of the story, unlike the other students of Class 1A. We see him as a young kid bullying Deku and see him develop as a character and hero. He is rivals with Deku and often clashes with him, but they also have to work alongside each other at other times, like when they're fighting villains. Bakugo is completely right when he dismisses others as an extra. It's a meta moment because they are extras and he isn't. The story spends a significant amount of time on him and his evolution. He is in many ways like the typical protagonist of a shonen, more so than even Deku. Like Naruto and Luffy, he doesn't hesitate to say that he's gonna be the number one hero in episode 1. Just like Naruto says he'll be Hokage and Luffy says he'll be the pirate king. He's not there to support Deku in achieving his dreams of being a number one hero. Quite the contrary, he's there to accomplish his own dreams which directly conflict with Deku's. After Deku, he is the most fleshed out character in the story and some people are rooting for him even more than they are rooting for Deku. Fact number 3. Bakugo probably had the most significant changes made to his character if we look at how much he changed since Horikoshi initially came up with the character. If you have been following these videos, you know that Deku was originally supposed to have hair over his right eye, but Horikoshi decided to give him a haircut. Bakugo's change is much more significant. Believe it or not, Bakugo was initially supposed to be a nice guy. Horikoshi writes, 
Originally, while still a natural born genius, he was also airheaded enough to inadvertently be hurting others without any malicious intent. Kind of sounds like Momo Yao Yorozu, if you ask me, but continue, Horikoshi. Then I realized that was lame, so I just went full bore and made him explosively rotten and detestable, and I'm glad I did. His face was already built for that kind of character. Wow, I don't think there's a more shocking fact than this out there. Not even a Kaminari fact could be more shocking. He was initially going to be a guy who had a wide-eyed smile and encouraged people to do their best and assured them that anyone could do anything if they tried. As Horikoshi points out, his old self would only piss the current Bakugo off. He made a complete 180. Let me know how you feel about this change in his character. Do you paradoxically like him more as a jerk, like Horikoshi? As we'll see in a bit, he's quite a popular character. And ironically, I somehow doubt he would have been as popular if Horikoshi hadn't tried to make him detestable. Now onward to... Fact number 4. In the Ochako video, I asked you guys what your favorite hero costume was, and most of you said Bakugo's costume. So let's talk about it. The giant grenade looking things on his wrists act as storage tanks for his sweat. His sweat is the key to his quirk. It acts like nitroglycerin. The more sweat, the larger his explosions will be. So his explosions are much more powerful on hot days that cause sweating than on cold days that don't. The storage tanks at the end of his arms make sure that none of his sweat goes to waste. He even has a two-stage setup to unleash the nitroglycerin in these tanks so it doesn't accidentally get released during a fierce battle. He must pull a pin, like a real grenade, to unleash his most fearsome explosions. My personal favorite feature is his knee pads, which Bakugo had designed, and I quote, with the purpose of killing with his knees as blunt weapons. Only Bakugo would make sure that even his knee pads can be used as deadly weapons. Lastly, he has hand grenades on his belt. Sweat from the storage tank is placed into these grenades, and they can be used like normal grenades, not only by Bakugo, but by others as well. For instance, Kaminari used it before when fighting against that guy with that gross power to turn people into deformed clumps of meat. So yeah, Bakugo's costume is all about explosions, death, and sweat management. Let me know if you guys still think the costume is the coolest, or if you now agree with Horikoshi, who thinks it's kind of gross. Or perhaps it can simultaneously be considered the coolest and grossest costume of all. Fact number 5. As I mentioned, despite Horikoshi purposely trying to make him explosively rotten and detestable, Bakugo is not only one of the most popular characters in the show, He's the most popular character in the show, at least if we go by the latest Shonen Jump popularity polls. In the Japanese polls, Bakugo got third, then first, then first again. And the gap between Bakugo and Deku, who got second in the latest two polls, only grew. In the latest Japanese poll, Deku only beat Todoroki, who got third place by one single vote, while the gap between Bakugo and Deku was 2,704 votes. That's insane, even more so when you consider that Deku is the shonen protagonist. If we look at another shonen manga like One Piece, Luffy, the main character, always gets first. If we consider that example, Bakugo's popularity seems all the more impressive. In the English popularity polls, Bakugo got fifth and then first in the second poll, so even in the US, he is extremely popular. His lowest score was in Crunchyroll's 2018 awards, where he got 7th. But as the show catches up with the manga, there is little doubt in my mind that Bakugo will start moving up once again. Hot air rises after all. But I'm truly fascinated by his appeal. Even Horikoshi was shocked that Bakugo turned out to be as popular as he did. Which makes sense since he set out to make a detestable character and paradoxically, he ended up being the most popular character instead. I was thinking of making a video about Bakugo's appeal and exploring why he is so popular in the future, so let me know if that's something you'd like to see in the comments and let me know why you think so many people like him. Fact number 6. Let's talk about the inspiration from Bakugo. Horikoshi actually gets inspiration from the same place Kanye West does. Let me explain. Kanye West's favorite movie is Akira, 
an anime film released in 1988. Kanye has said that Akira is his biggest creative inspiration. Although he is different from Kanye in many ways, Horikoshi shares Kanye's love of Akira. In fact, when asked how he gets the gears going, or in other words, the creative juices flowing, Horikoshi replied that it has nothing to do with American comic books. The secret is Katsuhiro Otomo's Akira. They often play the film in the office in order to get inspired. Horikoshi has further admitted that Tetsuo, a character from Akira, was the main inspiration for Bakugo's character. They are both examples of extremely powerful characters who nonetheless think and act like kids. In other words, they are not striving to be like respectable and responsible adults who conform to societal expectations. The fact that Bakugo has Katsu in his first name just like Otomo does is likely another way that Horikoshi pays homage to this inspirational film and its director. So it would seem that if Horikoshi and Kanye ever happened to run into each other, they could probably spend hours fanboying over Akira together. Fact number 7. Let's talk about Bakugo's stats according to the official handbook. Bakugo has some of the best stats in the whole show. He scored a 5 out of 5 in power, a 4 out of 5 in speed, a 5 out of 5 in technique, and a 4 out of 5 in intelligence. These stats help explain how he was able to get such amazing results so far, like ranking 1st in the UA entrance exam, 3rd in the quirk apprehension exam, and 3rd in class 1A's grades. The latter is a small detail in the story, but I love it. Usually you would expect someone like Bakugo to be a delinquent who doesn't care about school or grades, but he clearly does, which adds even more complexity to his character. He's not a super genius intellectually speaking who can get stellar results without studying. After all, he got a 4 out of 5 in intelligence, rather than someone like Momo who got an off the chart 6 out of 5. Minata actually has a higher intelligence level than Bakugo, scoring a 5 out of 5, yet Minata ranked 9th in class 1A's grades. This suggests that Bakugo actually takes grades really seriously and probably studies a lot. The only score that brings his total down is cooperativeness, where he scored a 1 out of 5. But I feel like Bakugo fans will be like, who cares about cooperativeness? In fact, I'd argue that his antisocial behavior is in large part why people love him so much in the first place. Fact number 8. Bakugo was born on April 20th, which makes him a Taurus. Usually I don't make a birthday its own fact, but sometimes when I think the birth date or horoscope reflects the character in some significant way, I like to explore the connection. Such is the case with Bakugo. For instance, a Taurus is, and I quote, stable and conservative. This is one of the most reliable signs of the Zodiac, ready to ensure and stick to their choices until they reach the point of personal satisfaction. Now, how stable Bakugo is, is up for debate. But he is stable and consistent when it comes to his dreams. He decided to become the number one hero, and he stuck to that decision ever since. For a Taurus, what can be often seen as stubbornness can also be interpreted as commitment. A Taurus's ability to complete tasks whatever it takes is uncanny. To me, this perfectly describes Bakugo. He was the first in the show to proclaim that he will surpass All Might, and he has been working as hard as anyone, if not harder, ever since. And I don't think he'll ever stop until he reaches his goal. Another thing is that a Taurus is supposed to make a great long-term friend. Now Bakugo is not easy to make friends with by any means, but I have a feeling that him and Kirishima, who actually somehow managed to make friends with him, will be friends for a lifetime. Fact number 9. Bakugo is voiced by 31-year-old Nobuhiko Okamoto. He has had many anime voice acting roles, including in Blue Exorcist and Assassination Classroom. The anime Slam Dunk inspired him to want to become a voice actor. This guy does a lot. He voice acts, sings, hosts radio shows, plays shogi, and even loves to play video games. So even Bakugo's voice actor is extremely cool. In the English dub, Bakugo is voiced by the 30-year-old Clifford Chapin. He has also voice acted in Tokyo Ghoul and Attack on Titan among many other anime, although none of the other characters are quite as explosive as Bakugo. Quite a talented guy, Clifford also serves as writer and director at Funimation. As always, let me know if you prefer Bakugo in the sub or dub below. Back number 10. If you've watched the previous videos, 
you know that I try to give you bonus facts whenever possible. Because who doesn't love bonus facts? One of the ways I deliver random bonus facts is by transforming fact number 10 into a lightning round of facts where I mention as many quick facts as I can. Now let us set off a few metaphoric explosions before we have to blow this popsicle stand. Bakugo is 172 centimeters tall, which is over 5 foot 7 and a half inches tall. This puts him right in the middle of his best bud Kirishima and the perfect incarnation of smarts and fan service, Momo Yao Yorozu. His blood type is A and he likes spicy food, which I expected, and also mountain climbing, which I didn't expect but am pleasantly surprised to learn. And lastly, there was actually a prototype for Bakugo's character in Horikoshi's previous work, O Magadoki. Zoo. Now, as usual, we go beyond plus ultra because we roll like that, and instead of being done with the content, we now turn to the comment corner where I asked you guys on Instagram what your favorite thing about Bakugo is. The response was awesome, and I have never been more curious to read your comments as I am in this instance, simply because Bakugo is such a polarizing character who you either hate or love. So I can't wait to see the reasons why some people do, in fact, love this character who was designed to be oh so detestable. Also, again, a sign of how popular Bakugo is, the Bakugo post actually set a record for the most likes we ever got in a single Instagram post. Man, Bakugo just breaking records once again. Thank you to all of you who liked and commented, and now let's jump into some of those comments right now. A lot of you really liked how he's not your conventional hero. For instance, Libby writes, I love how devoted he is to becoming a hero despite how he could easily be a villain because of his anger. He's just different from all the other UA students. And I agree, I also like how he stands out when compared to the other students and to the other heroes, while at the same time he is working as hard as anyone else, if not harder to become one. When he flat out refused to even entertain the idea of becoming a villain when the League of Villains kidnapped him, it showed how severely people misinterpret his character, not only in the fandom, but in the diegetic world of the show as well. Melody guest Neil likes how he doesn't wear a tie because he's a free man. To be honest, I forgot about this, then went back to the character height chart and noticed that he was, in fact, the only character not wearing a tie, which is yet another way that he stands out from the rest and shows that he doesn't care what others think. His sagging pants also point to this sense of freedom from conventional norms. It's impressive that, even through a strict school uniform, Bakugo can still convey his personality so well. I must admit that this freedom from societal norms and expectations, on the one hand, combined with an insane drive and work ethic when it comes to pursuing his dreams on the other, is probably my personal favorite thing about Bakugo. Dara Cosplay, along with a lot of you, mentioned his development as a character. Although it comes in slow little moments usually, it's true that Bakugo has come quite a long way since the days when he and his cronies bullied Deku. Not only has he learned to respect Deku more in his own way, as some of you mentioned, he actually has friends who he sees as equals now, like Kirishima, rather than simply having cronies who follow his orders. Dara Cosplay also mentions that they like how Bakugo has problems remembering names, and I'm totally the same way, so I relate too. And lastly, they find it funny that Bakugo calls Deku a nerd, even when he has better grades. I love that you brought that up, and you're right. It's totally hilarious how he tries to maintain this delinquent, anti-nerd persona, even while he probably studies as hard as anyone else. A lot of you pointed out his similarities to other popular characters. Gucci Boy says he's like Asta and Naruto, which is totally true in many ways. They are all loud and love making scenes. They also all proclaim their dreams in the first episode and never give up working on it. As I mentioned before, Bakugo in some ways is more similar to a conventional shonen protagonist than Deku, except for being a bully and telling another character to kill himself. Naruto and Asta wouldn't do that, but early Vegeta probably would, and that's another comparison that was made. Jeff says, Bakugo is the Vegeta of the series, who he hated at first, but grew to like his brand of tough love and the way he cares for others in his own way. This is a good comparison, although Bakugo is there from the beginning, while Vegeta takes a bit, especially if we count Dragon Ball, to make his appearance, but they both start out as tough guys who are more talented than the main character, but eventually have to compete with the MC 
and along the way become better people. Solo Kin 1 simply writes Sasuke Boom, which is accurate in its own way since Bakugo is a rival to the main character as well, but way more explosive than the often stoic Sasuke. Yadil loves his broship with Bakugo, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is one of my favorite bromances in anime to be sure. Let me know what your favorite bromance in anime is below. Lastly, I have to include the anime dude whose favorite MHA character is and has always been Bakugo. Anime dude, like many of us, respects his drive to win and be number one, and he likes how Bakugo is written so that his development takes place subtly over a long period of time without the core of his personality, which people love so much, changing. I agree with that, it's truly in those little subtle moments in between his usual antics where we see the most development in Bakugo, if we look closely enough. Anime Dude also always says, hashtag Bakugoat, and I actually heard the word from him first, so if you watched all the way to this point, pay some respect to the legend by dropping a hashtag BakuGoat in the comments. And that is it for this video. I hope you learned something new and that I did justice to this explosive, detestable, and paradoxically lovable character. I have to say that after doing this video, I'm truly fascinated by the character of Bakugo and his explosive popularity. Thank you for watching, especially to all of you who regularly participate in and watch the comment corner. I love hearing your spin on the different MHA characters, it's truly a treat. Although I can't put all the responses in the video, rest assured that I always make sure to read them all. Make sure to follow our Instagram at AnimeUproar if you want to participate and be featured in future videos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to kill that like button with your deadly knee pads and explode that subscribe button and ring that magic YouTube bell with an AP shot to make sure you never miss a new MHA video. Write down who you want to see next in the comments and check the MHA Facts playlist to make sure you don't suggest a character that's already been done. Once again, thank you all so much for your support, and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboys.